Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Coffee and Conversation with Kristen. So one little uh, new fact about me is that I don't drink coffee. Um, I don't, I'm a tea drinker, and then in the summer when it's hot, I drink Spark. It's a vitamin drink with a lot of focus, which is really great, uh, especially in an industry like this right now. So um, if you've never tried it, give it a try. It's got some pretty good flavors and such, but anyway, that's just a little tidbit on me. This morning, I wanted to talk to you guys about rate locks and why they're so important um, for the consumers to understand. A lot of uh, loans that we do, obviously, all of them have a rate and have a rate lock. What a lot of people don't know is those rate locks expire. There's a certain amount of days in which they are good for. So here at Guaranteed Rate, with a lot of lenders that I understand, um, typically you know of a 15 day increment, meaning rate locks start at 15 days, we go to 90 days and every 15 days in between there. So that's kind of how a rate lock works, okay? Now, the longer the lock, sometimes the rate can tick up a little bit. You wanna make sure you're talking to your lender about that. Um, not always, but at times there are. So, um, and the reason for that is, is because the lender, the second they lock that rate, the lender is really committing to your loan, okay? So a couple things with rate locks, one, you should be able to get your rate locked the second you have an accepted offer to purchase. Talk to your lender. Um, rates, remember, are pretty volatile right now. Still, the market is still a little volatile. So we want to make sure that you're capitalizing on that lowest rate possible. Okay. With that being said, you also want to make sure when you're telling your lender to lock you in that you're committed to your lender. Okay. So a couple just little tidbits there for you just to be prepared. Now, with that being said, rate locks again do expire. And where this is really important for the consumer to know why I wanted to discuss it is because a lot of times it can be confusing or, you know, throw you for a loop because you're just not educated in there. And a lot of times you probably shouldn't be or, or you maybe wouldn't have to be. So let's get things started. Okay. Let's say you're doing a home purchase. All right. And your uh, closing date is in 45 days. We get the approval or, or the accepted offer. We lock in your rate. We lock it in for that 45 or 60 days, depending on what the rates look like. Um, sometimes get a little cushion. And then it's our job as a lender to take that loan to the closing table on time. All right. That can be done. Of course, needs the help of you, the consumer. So what do I mean by needs the help of you? If you are a consumer who is Johnny on the spot, gets your documents to your lender on time when they ask, get exactly what they ask you for, you are not and should not have a problem with that, okay? If you are somebody who is dragging your feet or second guessing the lender or um, just this isn't a hurry to you or things like that, it can really make a difference in the process, okay? So with that being said, we as lenders are working on behalf of you, but we also wanna work on behalf of you getting that job done and getting a job done to the best of our ability and as quickly as we can to make sure that we're meeting all the timelines. Our job as a lender is literally timeline basis from the second that contract is signed to the minute we close. We have 72 hour timelines, then we have the rate lock timelines, then we have the contingencies within the offer we have to meet. We are timeline, 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 timeline. It's really important for you to be aware of that and then understand where that could change things for you. One of those things again is the rate lock, okay? so. We have clients, and, I, and I've had it before, you guys, I've heard every excuse under the book. Kristen, I'm busy. Kristen, I'm out of town. Kristen, I just, you know, I'm, it's going to take me a few days to put all those together. Yada, yada, yada. A lot of different things. The main key is, is one, just get your lender the documents as quickly as possible and exactly how they ask for them. We don't want to come back and beg you for different stuff. Uh, we're not interested in fighting you guys for why we need page seven of seven and a bank statement, Why? It, because it says it's intentionally left blank. That's because we don't know that it's intentionally left blank until we see it, okay? So an underwriter is always gonna ask, if it, your document says seven pages, we need all seven pages. If it says 35 pages, we need all 35 pages. With that also being said, it's extremely important for you to be forthright with your lender of any documentation that we would need. Let us lead you, okay? So what I mean by that is um, I had a client not long ago who fought me on documents, fought me on documents, swore up and down. She was not divorced. 
Then I found out she was. And when I asked her on it, she of course then said yes, because she was trying to get away with not getting me the documents, thinking I wouldn't find out, okay? And she didn't know where they were. So it meant that it was going to put a little bit of a wrench in her day. And I called her and she's like, yes. And I said, okay, I need the divorce decree. And then she said to me, and I'm not even kidding you, I should have never told you that. Now you told the underwriter and you threw me under the bus and now I have to get these documents. You guys, my license is on the line. If you had a bankruptcy, a foreclosure, a divorce, child support, any of that, that is imperative information that a lender needs because we always have to do our due diligence to make sure that we have all the liabilities correct or all the income correct. Now you can use child support as income, but again, it's also a liability even if it's not in your credit. We have to take those things into consideration. Now, I didn't throw her under the bus. She threw herself under the bus and made things difficult for herself. Had she been forthright with me and told me up front and was honest with me, we would have had the time we needed to get those things done. So please, as a lender, I will tell you and I will be saying on behalf of all lenders out there, if you have any of those documents that you need, please let your lender know so that they can steer you in the right direction. The longer you drag your feet, then guess what? Your lender's gonna call you and say, hey, Mrs. Apple, we're probably not gonna be able to close on time because out of the last 10 days, I've reached out to you six to eight times and you haven't responded and now we're up against it. And then the client gets mad because we now can't close on time, but really it's because they drug their feet, okay? So what we have to then do is extend your rate if your rate is going to expire. Now that comes at a cost, you guys, and the cost is a percentage of your loan amount, so it's different for every single person. Make sure you're talking with your lender if that's possibly the case, okay? The other thing you wanna do is something out of your hands, but has happened is a seller halfway through the loan process to say, hey, I, I really need another month. Can I stay here another month? Before you say, yeah, no problem, that works for us, call your lender. Your rate may be affected by that. And then you wanna be able to negotiate whether you're paying that rate lock extension, is the seller paying that rate lock extension? Because as a lender, I can't look at my boss and say, hey, by the way, the seller decided they wanna wait to move, so now we're gonna eat that cost. It doesn't work like that, you guys. We're willing to work with you, but you as a consumer have to know what all of these fees may entail. So if you are going to change any dates within the contract, especially extending them, make sure you talk to your lender. Last but not least, there are times where maybe an appraisal is gonna be a little bit late or maybe things like that happen. If that's the case, your lender should and will work with you on those extensions, okay? It's really a matter if you're hearing me right now, taking responsibility of, who is in charge of why this extension is needed, okay? But they can happen. They can happen on a daily basis. You can extend because if the rates go up, you wanna make sure you're not risking your rate lock. So kind of the moral of the story is work with your lender, talk to your lender, be open with your lender, get your lender the documents as soon as possible, and just know exactly where your loan stands so that way the end is just as easy as the beginning. You guys, I really appreciate you listening today. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Kristen. I'm with Guaranteed Rate. Drop your comments below. My contact information is also below. Please feel free to reach out if you'd like to discuss further. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.